start recording. Okay, so I'm really glad to have you here this afternoon, uh, Michael. Um, a few years back, I attended your Unblinking Eye um, exhibition at Whitby, and it was it was a real highlight um, of that weekend for me, but also in terms of deep in my PhD thesis um, at that time and seeing the physicality of those objects. And I'm sure we'll get into that. And then more recently at the Cold War Bunker um, with your re recent sort of audio visual presentation in the heart of the bunker there, um, you know, brought things to life even more. Uh, and I was glad to bump into you there and, and, and able to, to, to arrange this meeting. Um, so I could kick off with with my first connection, um, my first question, and also having you know read your uh, read through your, your PhD thesis, um, you know I, I very very much connected with your story of trying to run home from school within the four minute warning. Yeah, yeah. And I think seeing RAF Filingdales and RAF Men with Hill on childhood trips to Scarborough it planted questions, subconscious questions around nuclear war that emerged, you know, later as I did my PhD thesis. And I wondered, to what extent do you feel your work is an attempt to gain some kind of control over the fear of nuclear war that concerned you, you know, in younger years? Yeah, it, 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 it's like really interesting. Filing deals particularly be, it was, a, was a real emblem of the call of, of the fear of nuclear war in in childhood, and they've been really um, also passed down to us from my mum, from my mum who had had vivid um, memories of the Cuban Missile Crisis and that you know right on the brink, um, and she had been you know in the on holiday in Whitby during the time of Filandales as construction you know in 1962, and it eventually became operational in 1963. So I think during my childhood in the eighties, you know, there was there was generally this this transfer from from my parents to me about the fear of nuclear war, and particularly, you know, on you know sort of media at the time. I think um, during that time we were in a really you know terrible time, the early years of um, of Re Reagan era with. Um, cruise missiles being deployed at Greenham Common, um, Pershing in Europe and SS-20, you know, sort of in the uh, USSR. So there's a real sense of brinkmanship and, you know, the the this kind of mock year or, you know, sort of symbol of, of the four minute warning was, you know, you know, even though, you know, you could argue it was, you know, it, it might be a myth in that you could never tell, you know, whether it was four minutes, less than four minutes or more than four minutes. I think it had a very powerful effect that, you know, the during that time, the end of the world was this perpetual four minutes in the future. And, you know, I remember a time at school when there was a um, an early warning practice, the, you know, the, the, you know the the set of the power alarms just i think for a few seconds but you know it 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 turned everybody's blood ice cold in the class you know and, you know i particularly remember the teacher looking ashen and you know we all all felt like well this is it it's the end of end of the end of the world um and i think violent deals from you know, sort of that that childhood experience became this sort of um, emblem of, or source of this four minute. It's you know, and and for any of the listeners who don't know, Filandales. Filandales is a ballistic missile early warning station. It's on the North York Moors, just outside of Whitby. Um, it's one of three ballistic missile early warning radars that are situated around the North Pole. And since the early 60s, they've been perpetually looking for signs of nuclear attack from space, from ICBM. Um, and But this also pulls in another role they have of actually monitoring everything in space because you need to monitor everything in space in order to distinguish a, a warhead from a satellite. So that's just a, a, a kind of rough idea. So... It was this very powerful symbol, which 
strangely disappeared at the end of the Cold War, the, the, you know, 1989. You know, it all, all sort of disappears. There's massive disarmament, you know, you know, I've, I've kind of recently wrote about it and, you know, the, you know, the amount of weapons that were disarmed, you know, from the end of the 80s to, you know, quite recently is, you know, is quite quite staggering which is a real pity considering you know so contemporary events that you know that we're not further on and, and going backwards but I remember and it was more as into adulthood and you know sort of beginning you know a research journey or a, you know a, 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 an, a, an artist research journey that at the beginning of of the 2000s the beginning of the 21st century we had the new the incoming um, government of george president george bush and they you know and before before 9 11 and you know the you know the war on terror had been talking up reintroducing son of star wars you know the so-called son of star wars uh you know sort of um re-establishing the strategic defense initiative and Donald Rumsfeld was talking about a space bomber that could attack anywhere on the earth within half an hour. And it really was very striking that all of these fears I thought had disappeared suddenly become the main narrative again. And I think the, the artwork and the research that I am doing was, was an attempt to actually not gain control, but to make sense of how those you know how this politics and all, all these non narratives are produced and who's doing it i think that that was <laughs> that was the line of of who's doing it so you know from there uh, a sort of a, a collection of artwork built up of looking at rand corporation or you know you know um polit you know, key politicians from you know who at, at the time and you know these you know artworks were exhibited by Vane Gallery and, and and stuff like that, um, and I guess it was through that the, those roots of producing the artwork that I transitioned into a academic researcher, or you know, it's a, you know, I, th I think almost political geographer that uses you know create creative practice and you know in looking at these geopolitical phenomena. Um, this took us into a PhD, and this kind of strangely took us into filing deals, which was a very, very odd experience to to then walk into a into the filing deal side. It, you know, it was it, it was very unusual. Um I think just to to talk about how how that happened uh, might be useful is that I had been doing work at the York Cold War bunker, you know, along on along the artworks and there'd been some discussion between English heritage and Filandales. I think Filandales at the time it was around the just after their 50th anniversary war, wanting to set up a um a history archive or a, you know a museum of their history in you know ballistic missile early warning history and um and they were <laughs> the, 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 this argument ensued over a um over borrowing a dumb and it wasn't an argument but a, a you know a discussion over um borrowing a mannequin for a display of a, a a chemical nuclear chemical biological warfare suit that was part of their collection mm. and uh of course the english heritage said we can't possibly um loan you that until you ensure us that the mannequin won't damage the suit and of course violent day as well perplexed by this where they just went well it's it's meant to repel anything and <laughs> english heritage went, it doesn't matter we need yeah. those assurances but on the back of that discussion i had the introduction into filandales and they invited us to the to the site and my question at the time was like you know these huge deterrent structures can't be wholly monolithic they can't be completely sealed off from society at large um you know my thinking was that it, you know the atomic weapons establishment has a huge plan you know huge complex in the middle of Berkshire and it must clog traffic every time 
shift changes and you know there's there's these you know geo social you know spatial yeah, clues that would say that these cross over so the question was was to try and find evidence of that and you know and it was it was a, a real problem of how do you find out whether sites that are very secret you know sort of affect society at large and you know was invited up to Filandales and you know they said well we've got this archive which I kind of expected to be a small archive of you know sort of laminated newspaper articles or you know a few photographs and a bit and pieces but on arrival it turned out to be quite a large you know collection of of uh, consoles from the old tracker site the old golf ball areas a piece of the old golf ball that was a prominent piece in the um in both the whitby show and the the york cold war bunker show and um yeah they they kind of said what do you want to do with it and i said could i be an artist in residence and 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 the rest is history in 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 those terms um which kind of made you know for a very very strange experience to have to be amongst this materiality that created so much fear when you know <laughs> when i was a child you know i think no and i think that's a really good um note to shift into the next question because you, you mentioned that materiality in other words you've talked about you know the the radio corporation of america you know this well-known yeah. brand you've talked about um radar engineers that worked uh, with uh, you know created uh, Jimi hendrix's um guitar pedal um the, the, you know this very and, and and also the 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 works of art that you create the very material the the very the very tactile um the the, the cones the sort of missile shapes that you make and and I I wonder if that that's it it, it helps it certainly helps me to bring things close at hand. I get that impression through your work that you, as you mentioned just a few minutes ago, it's kind of taking these giant structures that are very alien and, and making them more open to the public in some way through through your artworks and through the representations that you make in, in you know, um, structures and art and sound and music. Yeah, I, th I think the, the term that you use, drawn closer, is is a really 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 perfect term of what trying to do with the artwork of of, of trying to draw the materiality you know sort of to give it a presence to be able to you know to touch it and you know experience it rather than experience it as a you know reading about it as a political narrative or you know sort of or in you know sort of in you know, something like security studies it, it's to actually make it real or, or tangible and the 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 warheads or corn pieces well in in many ways didn't start out to be an artwork and it didn't really start out to be you know a, a representation of you know of a trident warhead per se it was just to really you know to have something that was close that was present that you know maybe you know it was a more like a simulacra or a standing in which you know it might in some ways tell us about sort of you know intangible affects of you know of, of what these um, nuclear materialities these nuclear weapons materialities produce um but what happened in the process of making these was a really um unusual things started to happen or insights started to make themselves known and the um the the warhead piece the this this kind of small you know they're they're not full size they're they're proportional to the real warhead but they're you know they're about a tenth or something or even smaller of, of the actual size however how i kind of got the the, the size and proportion was just to look at these photographs that were um that you could find on the on on websites i think it was the nti.org web, website of of warheads being reconditioned in lawrence livermore and what really struck us by the photographs was how much the workshop 
look like a sculpture workshop or the metalwork workshops at the university. And this was a kind of real clue that you didn't need to look at the exotic material, you know, in a, a warhead, but you could there, but you could think about it in terms of, you know, the much more prosaic, you know, elements, you, you know, the, you know, you know, the tool, you know, both a, a, a workshop might use a hammer of some sort. They might use a a lathe of, of, of some kind or, you know, the, or, you know, the, you know, one, one thing that was really came out is that I started documenting the production of these warheads. I used, you know, a various process. It was to produce corns. I used them on a CNC routing machine and just as part of my research documented it. And it was around about that at the time that film came out from the Sandia um, National Laboratory of the B60, the new model of the B61 um nuclear bomb the you know, penetrating and the visual language of that video it was obviously produced by somebody with you know sort of an iphone or it, it wasn't sophisticated it was very functional and the language of of the film was superimposable onto the documentation that i was producing and so i started cutting these together and start to understand that you can pick out these lines at which these this 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 world of, of the nuclear that's shrouded in secrecy is produced is exotic or is you know you know the, the term the nuclear priesthood of you know of of, of of you know holds it as a you know a monolithic entity you actually find that there's these lots of interesting lines of crossover in the production and making. I think production and making is is quite important. Um you know both sides, you know, it it it's really prosaic both a site like an, an art school or a, or a weapons apparently use photocopiers. They both mm -hmm. you both use emails. Um there's products in 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 the older uh, warheads that were believed to be polystyrene that transmitted the the hard x-rays from the primary and converted it into soft soft x-rays so you know this very normal stuff um so like when i kind of went into filandales you kind of had all over these pieces of machinery the rca logo stamped on everything you know the the old you know, Thunderbolt. Mm. Um, and it was really striking again. And this was the next level of things becoming quite close because you just go, well, this is just on all those David Bowie records. They're on, you know, sort of all of these quite normal, you know, these you know, these iconic Iggy Pop, you know, sort of the... Um, and you can start to say that, okay, so... If these are the structures, these these deterrent structures are producing a kind of effect, and they're transmitting their effect through a very particular way. And it turns out through you know that comes through the engineering and out through you know speakers of of hi fi's and everything, and you know so you know, my kind of thinking is is that you that you you in some way draw these objects closer to be able to understand that they don't exist within monolithic zones but they have very profound shape and socio-cultural effects mm -hmm. um which you know i'm kind of now seeking to to grasp and 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 to to think of and you know there's the they 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 leap out in all sorts of ways i think um you know particularly you know at filing deals with being RCA it you can trace it back to the RCA plants in New Jersey and some of these had their record plants and you know and kind of even today on top of there you've got L3 Harris still occupying the same thing so these kind of can cross connections between you know audio and defense and electronic engineering I 
I, you know, I, I, I think they're not very obvious, but I think, you know, to, you know, you know, I think it's important to, to highlight the way they intersect with everyday life. Yeah. And I think one of the, um, the things that really brings that home to, to people who would see your exhibitions is that particular section from the geodesic dome of, of the original uh, RAF Filingdale's covering and, and, and the fact that it's made out of corrugated cardboard. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's so mundane, it's so striking that it's so normal on something so exotic as a geodesic dome. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I mean that that was kind of. I mean that was one of the one of the first things I saw in, of entering. You know the you know the 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 collection that Filandales had, which has become the the, the Filandales archive, which was part of our our collection, was to see. It, the, the, there was a very experience of of something so exotic being, you know, also very everyday you know sort of it, it you know the, there's one of my favorite um collections of, of, of stuff that i keep on coming back to in the final days archive is a collection of of magazines called scan and they were for us the engineers who were recruited at final days for all sorts of things for operating the radars it, 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 I think filing this is is interesting, and you know, and you know, I th I th in in that it's not a strictly, you know, monolithically military. It 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 you know throughout its history, it it it's relied on, you know, the public sector, and and certainly companies like RCA ran and operated the radar, and their engineers were, you know, entirely, you know, they they've spent, you know, the. The, there's some who were originally there you know i think this last batch are coming to the end of their retirements now at island deals um and you know they they you know they provided continuity for the radar the you know it's this massively technical system you know they you know they they had a um intuitive sense of when the radar wasn't when readings weren't right and whether this was to do with you know anomalies within the radar or or something so they you know they they ensured you know they brought this great amount of skill or bring this great amount of skill to to the job and operation but there's this book of you know these these scan magazines and they were produced by the engineers mm. because the north yorkshire north york was there's not a lot to do <laughs> you know, you have these engineers who, who come to this, you know, particularly in the winter, an incredibly, you know, empty and mm. exposed landscape. And these are magazines with recipes in them about, you know, sort of events for kids or mm. for, you know, all sorts of, you know, who's who's coming on base, who's leaving, who's had promotions. Um, and they were really striking in that you think, well, there's this, these everyday lives and everyday mm. practices mm. going on within these exotic spaces, and of course, you you know you collapse these two mm. worlds. These worlds collapse together in mm. you know the you know the you know the, the nuclear is both exotic and it's both domestic, which you know I guess aligns with you know I, I suppose our childhood experience of, of you know this 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 you experienced the threat at home mm. you know it, it was within a a domestic setting that that you you know that you experienced you know the you know, the, the possibility of the end of the world mm. which kind of made it really which i think was quite a distressing thing mm. <laughs> but about it and you know it unstabilized your family home but you know what what's interesting is you sort of see that sort of you know set and reproduced within within the archive in a different way but you know there's you know i find it fascinating this you know the the everyday you know discipline. yeah um that, that every day and just to come back to some of that about the childhood experiences another thing which i think spurred me on quite a lot was at secondary school probably about the age of 13 i found in a in a desk drawer i've still got it 
a, a, a pamphlet by South Yorkshire County Council because I'm originally from Doncaster, and it was a study yeah. into what would happen if there was a nuclear war. Um, yeah, about yeah. 1983, and it's so nicely made with loads of charts and like blast blast radius and everything. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those blast radius. I've got, I've got. I think I was probably the same age, and it was like at secondary school, and there was a um, an encyclopedia, and in one of the, I think it was. Uh, hydrogen bomb or something and you know in in the and then take the period. i was obviously looking for it and and there was this you know the blast cir circles and and what you could just go is like okay well i'm more than five miles from newcastle you know yeah. so i wouldn't be completely vaporized and and it all it, it opened up this this strange calculation that you were doing or thing of like where in this the, these blast rings do i want to <laughs> do i want to be do i actually want to be in the center of it or yes know, yeah do you on, want to live or do you want to for, or the or the or the 40 mile out yes. <laughs> if you're just going i don't don't fancy surviving it <laughs> no 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 um, i've never seen any films like threads or anything like that which i understand is really powerful um the, it's yeah. a film from the 80s about nuclear war it's set in sheffield yeah, okay. yeah, it's yeah, it's particularly powerful threads. Um, I had a, what's really what I really advise is to go to to check out the Barry Hines archive, and they've got the the scripts to 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 threads in, you know, in the archive. But you know, and it's yeah, it's quite a quite a powerful film, but also, you know, not a. <laughs> Yeah, when 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 do you when do you make the space to watch something like yeah. <laughs> like threads, and and of course your documentary with the BBC, I was watching that, and um, again very very powerful the way in which the um, the 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 seamen um, were just kind of given no protection, and the way they they you know explain. Um, what they saw when they saw that sort of that black that black boiling explosion and it, it wasn't like a, a kind of it wasn't like the sun it was life giving it was like a, a boiling evil thing that the way that they described that yeah yeah that description was really powerful i mean the yeah the documentary came about you know as a you know as a, as a result of the, the phd was research and a, a a pitch and a training session you know it snowballed into a, you know, a documentary so i worked with a, a company called erica stalin for for the bbc and um they teamed me up with the director dan vernon and we were saying how what do you do with a with a nuclear film to to so it's not not kind of obvious and you know we you know and you know there's certain things that dictated the form of the film it's all users archive footage and you know sort of particularly pleased with the way the archive footage particularly of christmas island was used in that you know the you know the i think in you know what you say is, is mostly you'll get a generic shot of a nuclear explosion in a documentary but the the explosion in the film is the actual explosion that is being witnessed by by the um you know by the the veterans and i think one of the things that i really wanted to you know impress upon um dan who was the director of, of like to have an understanding of the cold war and the fear of the cold war you've got to understand the materiality of the weapon it's um um oh god i've i've i've, I've forgot I've, I've forgot the philosopher's name's just gone straight out of out my, my head but you know to understand the whole structures of the cold war these structures of fear you've got to understand the bomb itself mm -hmm. and its capabilities and you know how it's delivered and, and and all sorts of things so that sort of left dan with a bit of a you know a puzzle about how do you compare this very com complex um this weapon and and also to have people who felt it who were close to it and 
um, he got in touch with the, um, you know, the, the British veterans of, of Christmas Island. Um, and we designed just a very simple set of initial questions about what did it smell like? What did it felt like? You know, these very, you know, you know, rather than describing it, emotions it was what what was it like to be present in that space and what we got was this incredible you know this kind of incredible story that pills out through the the the, the entire film that's you know that forms the the bookends the films of of the of the veterans experience of 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 the explosion and that you know witness of a of a you know of a a really boiling disturbing you know the thing that rising up you know was you know you know could could never never really Im imagine it and and i think also you know the the witnessing of of how birds in the sky caught mm. fire and, mm. you know and and uh, you know really sort of quite you know quite you know distressing mm. um sort of descriptions but also what, what struck us in in there which in the, in the film is that they said it also made them all feel gung-ho because with a weapon like that nobody's going to try anything you know mm -hmm. so it had you know for that begin had this this very strange paradox but yeah what, what you know what what came out was the you know the you know the the terrible legacies mm. of of those tests on mm. on the vet, veterans. I think in the end of the film, you know, it, it goes into you know the, not only the effects on them but the the, the family. So, you know, I, I I think what we were shown was you know the weapon and the effects and you know the the veterans were you know you know people who were survivors of nuclear weapons use. You know something. Yes. yes those those bookend of it bookended it um quite well but yeah it was a you know a, a, you know the, the the testimonies were incredibly powerful and um you know we got quite a, a, a um, on the whole good reaction power you know very you know from all involved yeah it's the the british guide to the end of the world i highly recommend it mm -hmm. to listeners um, and, and that, as you've just explained there, Michael, you know, um, that reality of, of what the, the bomb is actually like, what it does to you uh, physically, um, I think leads quite nicely into the, to the next question. Um, and I know this, there's quite a lot of theoretical phrases in this next question, but I, and I am slightly yeah. familiar with the losing guitar, but I, I, I like theory. So this is why I put this one in here. Um, as a, and as an attempt to perhaps push back against those those destructive weapons um to what extent do you feel that your work is an attempt to create a, a nomadic war machine to, to disrupt the assemblages of nuclear war something akin to Deleuze and Guattari's warrior animal weapon yeah I mean uh, the, the the war machine is a really interesting piece of Guattari's Deleuze and Guattari's theory. Um, one thing is that it was it was developed during the, you know the height of the Cold War. You know it's it's a it's a theory of the Cold War. Um, but what the theory does, it's very different from um, a conventional notion of the war machine of being something that's produced by. A state defense industry or government um they make a distinguish of it it's not a state structure like a military the war machine is more like a force of nature that is released by war and it's something that both destroys destroys state structures and but also reconfigures so you know, it 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 reconfigures reality in different ways. Um, and one of the things of actually thinking about this, it 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 it, as I understand it, the the theory emerges from, you know, something like um, Nietzsche's idea of 
create a force which is more than human it you know it's it's creative forces act on mountains they shape mountains they you know they you know they 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 shape nature so this was a kind of idea of, of, of what fascinated me about the war machine and it and it's probably quite obvious is, is that Deleuze and Guattari situate the war machine in terms of creative forces or mm. creative production mm, and probably. they kind of um and they kind of sort of say that these creative forces that you know creative activities are ways of capturing what these forces are doing and what kind of new social arrangements they're producing and obviously being an artist it's 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 a it's a good thing to key into in a bit of theory because in some ways like you go i think i know what they're doing in terms of materiality i've got an understanding of materiality and making and this might be a good way of converting that material thinking into a into a theoretical Mm. way of doing, doing things so i think in the work the the, the, the warmish you know in, in terms of using creative activity to reconfigure an understanding an experience i, th- I think the artwork does you know it operates on the on a very you know i suppose on a certain small scale as a as our kinds of war machines to to you know uh, to, to reconceptualize you know sort of you know the you know nuclear nuclear structures i think oh, should stress of not reconceptualize them and and making them safe or or normalizing them mm-hmm. but actually to to sort of to make visible or in the music to make audible the extent to which they they affect and shape the um, mm. social worlds, and I think that's that's particularly important to 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 open up the discussion that you know that that you know why the conventional representation you know and it and it's across you know all you know arms control from, from you know in, in my opinion from arms control to you know sort of from you know, hawkish ideas to mm. evolve control to, you know, the ones of, of complete dis- disarmament. There's this prevailing image of nuclear weapons in, in terms of the destruction they bring, you know, that that their destruction has a deterrent force or the destruction is, you know, a, you know, a, you know a immoral to hold that over you know mm. sort of mm. life kind on the on on the planet they're kind of couch within destruction you know the the, the kind of literal effect of you know of, of, of a desert what i what what my sort of approach was um, and the pe- particularly in adopting you know, you know the this kind of idea of a of a war machine of you know of a, of of both destroying and creating was to think what kind of world do they create they you know they you know as I alluded to at the beginning they mobilize massive workforces you know there's there's huge you know there's been trillions I, I, you know I, I, off the top of my head, I think the, the number is America spent seventy three trillion on nuclear weapons since, you know, sort of the Manhattan Project, and you know, this doesn't just you you can't have that amount of money, that amount of material, that amount of, of you know, sort of mobilizing universities, mobilizing industry and it not to shape societies outside um and i think i think the discussion you know must also have that element of of mm-hmm. of how you know what what is what is the social consequences of of maintaining a deterrent and what then effects does that have on a society you know in you know, in terms of its its culture and its 
the way it views the, you know that society views the world or mm. you know or, or 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 shapes it so i think those are you know in, in terms of you know developing a discussion that's that that would be the aims and, and trajectory of 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 what I'm doing with the artwork and you know I'm doing doing this in time terms of also I think that I think one of the interesting things about the war machine it, it isn't entirely based something that doesn't come from discourse or representation it's not it's not you know it doesn't have meaning it is material processes it is interacting of things going together that are producing new worlds mm. beyond human experience and these new worlds are shaping the societies that we 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 live in too so you know it it it, it opens up how are the things that we make and producing these new and, and future worlds and i think you know it's it's particularly a question at this time that emerges with you know sort of use of you know this this further bigger use of space mm. new preparation of weapons and you know the outbreak of wars such as ukraine you know that i think you know to look at these in material terms mm. rather than just a discursive terms i think you know the war machines are very useful tool for doing that no, and I think that's that's a really good point that I hadn't really grasped, but it's so obvious, you know, as you were saying, the these these projects, they what the relationship between the huge destructive potential that they have, but also the vast amounts of resources that go into them. You know, they seem to yeah. mirror the, the you know, the vast yeah. amounts of money money. For example, my own interest in ballistic missile defense, which as you mentioned earlier, seems to bubble up a few years after supposedly the end of the cold war yeah um, yeah and, and that ballistic missile defense the americans have since the 1950s have spent at least 400 billion dollars on trying to get this system to work yeah 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 and and i think you know there's it's you know i, I think ballistic missile defense it even in some ways predates Filandales and the ballistic missile early warning and there's a there's always this notion of of that they overlap and you know sort of Filandales was you know sort of in you know the the early 2000s upgraded to work you know as, as to be a, um, a, a sensor which you know from my understanding spooled took the early warning date and spooled it onto you know, much more precise tracking radars to, you know, to to allow the, the you know, interceptor missiles to work, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, yeah, but these are, you know, sort of really, you know, the, the history of, of ballistic missile defence going right back to the early use of, of like, Bell, Bell Laboratories and, you know, Ajax, you, you know, you... You nevertheless, I, I kind of you, you you know when you look start looking at it, you kind of see these really interesting cultural crossovers, and you know there's there's some elements that I haven't fully explored yet, but you know there's a there's a really um, famous um, art event um, called Nine Even that uh, Robert Rauschenberg organised with um, engineers from Bell Laboratories and. You know, there's there's a really uh, intricate te set of technologies that they 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 developed was to the in in this nine was was a a, a a tennis match. You know, that they put on a tennis match, and people were hitting this ball, mm -hmm. and every time the ball hit the tennis rack, it it triggered this you know sound installation and this sonic experience that the that the audience would experience experience but the engineers had to devise a way of detecting the trajectory of the ball it being intercepted by the bats right and they developed and they developed a small computer just for the bell laboratories you know this event mm -hmm. now it does raise the question of like well they're bell laboratories 
they devised, uh, you know, some kind of detection thing to detect the trajectory. And, you know, they've developed a computer. God, that sounds like a ballistic, you know, sort of an anti-ballistic missile system, something mm. like Sentinel. And you wonder, you know, where does this flow, you know, how do they, you know, that that even these things mm. are producing cultural phenomena. And, you know, I, I think it, 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 it probably becomes mind boggling, but, you know, never, nevertheless, you know, these resources, you know, they, they, they go into one thing and they, they, they shape the world in a different in a in a different way and you know you know and and, and i think yeah yeah I, I, you know in in terms of whether it's worth whether it's worth it I, you know I, 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 th I think the results of the 50 years of abm probably speak for themselves <laughs> you know? yeah it, it, ne it never quite gets there <laughs> oh no um yeah, many, many of the tests are kind of, I wouldn't say rigged, but they, they, they know where the target's going a lot of the time um, to try and hit it. But uh, again, just to, again, to come back to that idea of the nomadic war machine and all the assemblages and, and your work, as I understand the idea of nomadic war machine, as you alluded to, it's not just something that comes from state organisations or, you know, big power centres. It also enables you know, um, you might call um, the the disadvantaged, if you like, to to or, or those outside of the power spaces to sort of ride those waves of yeah. creativity and and sort of usurp them or create their own assemblages to fight back. And I feel kind yeah. of kind of that's a little bit with your work as well in in, in bringing this into public con consciousness. Yeah, I think it 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 sort of opens up. I think with with more different possibilities, you know. Mm -hmm. I think you know that you you we you know you you don't need to go along with the status quo. You can open up new worlds and new areas of connection and and you know and discussion and you know and 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 even you know and you know particularly with the war machine you know sites of resistance you know too so you know i, th I think you know there's a um multiplicity and a plurality in you know in you know what 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 i'm doing and i think one thing that's that's quite powerful is that you know, and in, in, in certain some of the response in bringing, you know, the the you know the nuclear infrastructure is closer in, in changing, you know, the the you know the site of the discussion, you know, like it opens up new entry points in which to you know to access something that, you know, of, of all tens of persons, you know, is monolithic is a you know you 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 stand in front of this and go like well how can an individual you know sort of even make a dent in you know in in you know what you know this this kind of juggernaut or you know or or or, or produce any kind of change within it but i think by look by changing the sites of discussion or changing the sites to then and entry on this mm. you know it, it presents new you know inventive ways of, of doing it and you know I, I think in in some ways i can only speak for myself in that it's it's kind of opened you know sort of not only yeah a, a you know a, a new way of engaging and conveying you know sort of you know I've just lost my thread. <laughs> so oh. sorry about that. But no but problem. yeah, it, it yeah, it, I th I think it's it's particularly changing this this site of discussion and opening mm. up new ways of of critiquing and dis mm. you know discussion mm. you know weapons. You know, particularly I think what is you know disturbing is like how, as we say, after the Cold War, the discussion of nuclear weapons dropped off considerably. You know, they they disappeared entirely from from public view mm -hmm. um and of course you know they hadn't went away at all you know they you know they they continued 
you know not to be built but they they continue to be maintained the structures that maintain them they grew you know the you know the you know the in 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 terms of, and until you know we we arrive back at a situation now where we're you know turn back we've turned back the clock 30, 30 years mm. where nuclear weapons are now grown again mm. and you know I, you know I thought I thought you know the, the, you know we we you know they they you know yeah, we need new ways of bringing these into public attention or, or you know or, or even sense by the public Apparently, I, feel, I feel that's what your work is doing you know just the fact that we're having this conversation if i hadn't have heard all those years ago of the blinking eye uh, and yeah. then sort of come across your later work as well um i think i think this is a really good way of you know bringing that that knowledge of what these spaces are like and, and that spurring you know, it's like the lipstick traces. You don't know where this is going to lead down the line and, and help people yeah. sort of, uh, you know, combat militarism, let's say. Yeah, 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 yeah. I th- I th- and, yeah. and also, I think, to to look behind what constitutes militarism or or the narratives or or language that, that, that in many ways produces an image of, you know, of of a monolithic or monolithic image of of you know sort of let's let's say let's say the military industrial complex, but you know, in by diverting or, or coming into a different way by looking at it in terms of a materiality or things that are made and you know sort of made of you know lots of individuals that are that are employed there or has these work and conditions or 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 whatever it it shifts it away from you know sort of a uh, an idea that is being produced by by narratives to something that is much more comprehensible you know and you know opens up you know yeah a, 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 you know much clearer line to to engage you 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 you're sort of short circuit and you know all the narratives that you know, establish a, a political image mm. for one that opens up new possibilities of, you know, or, or opens up a reality. Yes. You know. <laughs> and just presents it there as it is um, for yeah. people to, to sort of make up their own decisions. Because, because as you say, you know, there are, there's, there's very different contradictory conclusions people might come to, the, you know, the veterans... Uh, uh, as is quoted in there, they were they were disturbed by the bomb, but they also found it, they, they they felt like they had some power behind them because of this weapon, and also you know all the research that comes out of these different institutions, etc. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think the, the sort of I think the watchword is, is that it's complex. <laughs> it's, is you know the the very it's complex and it's con- contradictory, and it's kind of not useful to see it in terms of you know sort of binary black and white whether you know you know the the much more nuanced mm. you know in 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 those terms mm. and um, i suppose that that links quite nicely you know that discussion of of um the, the falls and against of, of of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile defense um can can we overcome what uh gunter anders someone you you quote in your research what Gunter Anters calls the Promethean gap between the embodied limits of human imagination and the enormous powers that nuclear weapons bestow, whereby, to quote um, Gunter, we can bomb to shreds thousands and thousands, but we cannot mourn or regret them. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's. I mean, the Promethean gap is really interesting. It does relate in some ways, or, or, or as I'm thinking through, it does relate in some ways to the, you know, elements of 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 the war machine in in that you know you 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 dealing with you know, sort of more than human forces you know sort of a you know I, th- I think what you know quoting one of the the veterans is that you you ignite a star on the earth you know that's basically a a, a hydrogen bomb that's you know your you know you you or thermal nuclear weapons you you ignite this 
incredible power you know that that is actually beyond any you know sort of human comprehension um and i and i think in in terms i in in that the, you're unleashed, unleashing this massive and you know to you know and in, in talking on these big cosmic scales you're you know you to, to unleash that amount to release that amount of energy you know to the you know the energy that you know the the same processes that created the, the universe you, you know quite you you can i don't think you can cross that Promethean gap you know the you know the you know once you cross that you know that threshold you 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 know there's, there's no way of comprehending the the res, the results of it um yet i think you know as as it is you know in the world there's there's 15000 weapons you know with with that capability um so you know, the, there's no way of crossing the gap, but there is a way of understanding that these things produce new formations of reality of, you know, that that nobody can sort of really comprehend. I think what's interesting at the minute within, you know, you know, sort of the, you know, nuclear threat communities is, you know, a, uh, you know, certainly a, a creative turn going on in in some aspects, and particularly there's a there's an organisation called N Square, which is partly which is funded by the Plowshare Fund and um, and other major US you know, sort of nuclear threat funders, and they kind of say you know sort of these emerging technologies of 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 you know, sort of artificial intelligence, space-based weapons, and you know, as as kind of producing new and different kinds of reality. They, you know, they, you know, and what these are doing from what N Square assumes is that they, you know, exceed our conventional methods of analysis. So, you know, you know, they they kind of say that the need that we need new methods to understand what kind to get a, a barometer what kind of formations these might make and you know what what might be in store for this for you know the human race in the future you know and you know and you know what dangers emerge you know by I don't know, combining a nuclear warhead with an ai or you know or you know or what or whatever you know these you know these these produce all kinds of new new threats um um so yeah I'm, you know the the promethean gaps interest and i don't think you can completely cross it which i think is much more important to then <laughs> you know try not <laughs> try not to push <laughs> you know leap into the void or or whatever I hope that was a good enough answer. <laughs> Sorry. I hope that was a good, good enough no, it answer. Was, yes. No, and it, it got me um it, it got me thinking about um certainly Headley Ball, who was a theorist of international relations. You know, uh, this is not a positive stance in my view, but he 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 thought that nuclear weapons were very positive because they created this new assemblage whereby there couldn't be war in the future. Now, yeah. the issue is it's a very knife edge thing. You know, if something goes wrong somewhere down the line, um, you know, there, there are people that would argue that the Ukraine war hasn't escalated because of nuclear weapons, because both sides have got nuclear weapons. And that would kind of be the view that Headley Bull um, subscribed to. Um, yeah, yeah. But it seems very precarious. Yeah, it's, it's a tough, okay. I mean, it is a... It's, it is a a, you know, sort of a, a base, basis of a of a certain line of, of thinking in security studies is that we we need nuclear weapons because they prevent they prevent wars. Oh. Um, it's a really interesting way of looking at them. I think there's um, I think person that I come back to quite a lot 
is um, Randall Forsberg, um, who you know it was a um, a nuclear analyst in the early eighties. Who you know was also an activist. You know, sort of was instrumental in the nuclear freeze. Mm -hmm. You know, had had kind of observed that it's a it's a strangely parental, you know, or view of nuclear weapons in that they prevent war by prom promising a really terrible punishment if the human race is is sort of bad or you know sort of goes you know starts fighting each other so there's a it's you know there's this really weird role that nuclear weapons or or say strange symbolism or, or narrative that they that they sort of develop you know with within within certain discourses or you know sort of you know when 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 you know a collection of people enter certain discourses they you know it, it produced you know the you know there's you know the anthropologist carol corn in the 80s wrote about you know sort of a you know the 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 def defense expert or the nuclear defense you know deterrence expert of of the language actually producing certain kinds of belief structures and you know that they you know that they're quite 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 seductive and you know he, even Randall Forsberg in in some ways you know starts talking about unusually how nuclear weapons make wars impossible you know to be able to you know to go and fight a you know a full conventional war you know, uh, you know, in in the scale of World War Two, you know, with nuclear weapons, is an impossibility. Yeah. Um, she takes this in a, a, you know, sort of a a really interesting tangent, and so well, if that's possible, would it be possible to to not have any more wars? You know, to find, you know, sort of, you know, a war by different means. It's almost that reversal of politics as is war by by different means so they you know they 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 skirt around um those those routes but you know it yeah it, it's a it's a really unusual ontological question to you know when 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 you know when you center you know the when you when when you center world security and you superpose it on to you know the of a existential question at the same time you know it, it produces a really um odd kind of dissonance between you know you know so you know I, you know my my sort of instinct is to reduce the threat <laughs> to, you know to, to as, as much as as possible mm -hmm. because you know following you know just just following the thing of of you know the the world makes itself regardless of you know human thought and reason is you know you 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 just you know things can combine in a whole load of you know sort of nuanced and interesting ways I've, and you know I, I think what you know you may already know there's a book by called the 2020 commission on the nuclear war between North Korea and the United States by, yeah. by Dr. Jeffrey Lewis mm. is an incredible book to to share, say that even the systems that that are so carefully designed to keep everything safe are susceptible to the most bizarre chain of events. And you know, and and you know, and, and I think while you have these very powerful systems on very, you know, short short time lengths or you know, sort of short triggers, mm. yeah, it, it you you vastly increase uh, uh you know a risk of accident or inversion or it, it becoming part of a you know of a of a of a more than human assemblage, you know, so, uh, you, know, um, you know, in terms of those terms. And uh, I, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, it's been a fascinating conversation so far, but it, what you're saying really resonates with some reading that I've been doing recently around um, nuclear weapons and 
the the way in which they literally become almost godlike in in yeah. because the, the the fact that that nuclear war is not happening sort of underpins our existence right at this very second. You know, there is yeah. that capacity to destroy the world. But I, I, I almost see it more as I don't know if you're familiar with the, the author H.P. Lovecraft. And he has this idea of this god called Azathoth, which is not a kind of an evil god or a good god. It's just kind of a god of chaos that stumbles around and destroying things. And that's how I see nuclear yeah. weapons. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a, there's you know, again, you know, it, it pulls out this, you know, that very much speaks to something like the war machine. It's it or, you know, or the way the war machine has a certain kind of creativity that's absolutely ambiv ambivalent it doesn't you know you can't make any you know sort of value judgment of whether the creativity is a good creativity or bad creativity it's just busy creating the world you know it's it's producing and you know in you know in a you know perhaps a a, a sort of chaotic a kind of way um but i think it's really interesting what you say about this you know sort of you know, look of the, this kind of centering of nuclear weapons in a in a godlike position, and you know, touched on, you know, this notion of a nuclear priesthood as well, and and you know, it, it reminds us of a, a, it's just a paragraph from uh, the theorist Paul Virilio. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with Paul Virilio's work. He's a you know cultural theorist, and I think you know. Really, yeah, <laughs> he really, he really um, captures this. You know, it's a really, it's it's in the book, a logic of sense, and it, and I, and I suppose it speaks to your research with um, sort of anti-ballistic missiles and you know defense. Where where he says something like, "To the uninitiated, spending that much money on something that you probably wouldn't use." makes no sense at all however to the minds of of to the minds of the military minds of the initiative mm. there there is no an upper limit on the value of pres of just parading them in public you know that's all they need to do you just need to parade them in public and they have to be surrounded with horrific imagery so you know it, it, it was very much it was one of those quotes that you know enabled to to think through this things in terms of a creative practice because they go like okay well you you know you produce artwork so you produce media things to place in public you produce the mean and in in the public's eye and I, you know and i think that also speaks to the critique i said you know spoke about earlier on in which the 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 weapon is only ever viewed in terms of its talismanic destructive you know this this you know I, I don't know, it's, um, you know this this magical allure of 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 you know of ultimate destruction you, you know you, this that's you know that's its godlike power and you know that's that's that image is paraded in public so you know if some ways you can short circuit that image by either making them mundane or you know reinscribing them as actually it's an object that's human made but its consequences are terrible you know I, I, I think that would be incredibly useful in otherwise I think all you know for me all parties and my opinion use that kind of god you know destructive god image of 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 a you know of of nuclear weapons which you know I, I think going forward would be more useful to have a more a much more complex a nuanced view and 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 different ways to sort of um dis discuss and critique and you know sort of you know and and, and you know and in certain ways produce policy or you know in, in in other ways but i think you know ultimately we're here with nuclear weapons having a, a magic allure and you know 
somebody's going to go, oh, I really want one of them. <laughs> you don't know. You don't want to turn me, turn me entire economy over to producing, <laughs> producing these things. No, I think that's a that's a that's a really great note to end on there, Michael. Um, I will just stop recording in a moment, but I just want to thank you very, very much for coming on. Um, it, it's been really great talking to you. I really appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to spend an hour talking with me and answering those questions really well and so interestingly there. No, it's been really great. Thank, thanks for inviting us. Really, it's really good to to aim to work. You know, to, to work through these these ideas, and you know, because you, you you sell them, you just you know, typing them out. <laughs> but it's, it's really great to discuss. Thanks very much. Thank you.